Why is it that the qualities you first admired in your partner can become the exact same qualities that you now label as annoying? <laughs> Those cute quirks that are now the source of your silent criticism? So if you used to think, I love that she's so fun and spontaneous, now you could possibly think that labeled as impulsive, scattered, or out of control. Like when she went to get groceries and came back with a kayak. Or if you used to look at him with adoring eyes because you just loved that he was so focused and together, his now anal retentiveness may fall under labels like predictable, boring, or just too uptight. Like when he took the soup cans and put them in alphabetical order. Well, look, don't worry. This doesn't have to mean that your whole relationship is headed down the drain. But let me tell you something. If you don't start paying more attention to the labels you're attaching to the person you love, the romance in your relationship could be headed down the 3D drain, the dysfunctional, damaged, deficient drain. I mean, it's not that surprising that it gets harder and harder to fire up that romantic chemistry and get that potent love potion flowing if those silently said negative labels start sliding between the sheets. It's really hard to cozy up to boring, chatty, cheap, impatient, lazy, obsessed, prude, shy, workaholic, or just annoying, and you know, get turned on. Now, I've been in a loving relationship for a long time now, but <laughs> I'm still amazed at how long it took me to learn some of the most basic lessons in how to maintain the long-term romance, which was a surprisingly painful thing to accept. But two practice marriages can make you think about a few things. The bottom line is at the end of the day, this silent labeling completely derailed my relationships. And that's why I've dedicated the last decade of my life to passionately researching, creating communication tools, writing a book, speaking, training, all trying to answer the question. How do the very qualities that started out as adorable when falling in love change into behaviors that we now label as annoying once the honeymoon's over? Here's what I found out. Perhaps we fell in love with the parts of our partners that we possibly fell a little short on. And together, you rounded each other out a bit. You know how they say opposites attract? I think it's more like compliments. They attract. Let me give you an example. So in my own romantic relationship, our qualities and our behaviors, they complement each other because we understand and we accept each other's emotional needs. So I'm an extrovert and I am ignited and I am driven by the thrill of challenge and new experiences. Where my partner Chris, he's an introvert who's comfortable with routine. So when we find ourselves in a new situation, like going to a new restaurant, you know, in my case, I'm not just looking for a meal. I want to create a moment, you know? I want a cool dining vibe. I want lots of interesting new menu choices. And even better, I want wait staff that's singing and blindfolded. I'm serious. Where my beloved, he's not even leaving the house until he pinpoints his burger on the menu. He reads his accordion file, his, his huge file full of reviews, and he radios ahead to check that there's no lineup. I mean, clearly, we bring different things to the table. However, because our tendencies complement each other, we end up with an experience that's safe and enjoyable for both of us. And this is usually how it goes. The introvert falls for the extrovert. The impulsive falls for the planner the steady plotter for the adrenaline junkie, and the adventure grabber, well, they fall for the security seeker. There's no denying the idea that something in us is drawn to people who counter some of our dominant qualities with complementary tendencies. But 
after some time goes by and that love luster dust dries up, we don't see those qualities as complimenting us anymore, but rather they're just annoying. Now, I know it would be convenient to blame this on COVID, the increase in time that couples are spending together, but the truth is, labeling is something we humans have been doing since the beginning of time. I mean, we love to label. Labeling is how we categorize and organize the world and people around us. It's an evolutionary process that started out saving us, grouping the world into danger and safe, people into good and bad. But like many things in our evolution that start out as helpful, we take it too far. And it can end up being hurtful, like labeling admirable attributes as annoying instead of just allowing them to be complimentary. I think it's sort of like evolution has this private joke going on. I mean, it's luring us into labeling to help us make sense of the world, and then it's silently slipping in the romantic relationship eroding warning in teeny tiny print. Labeling must be done with care. And even though I know, oh, I know, the damage that this negative labeling can do, I have the divorces to prove it, it's still hard to change. Making that switch from negative to positive, to be careful and conscious of the labels we're attaching to the person we love. Because most of us, we have highly developed critical labeling skills, and they are lightning fast. I'm talking ninja fast. And those labels, they're just standing at the ready. So just the other day, I'm in the kitchen, and we're making dinner, and I go to grab the knife, and he says, be careful, it's really sharp. And he gets this. And I say, seriously? I'm an adult. Thanks, control freak. In my mind. And with those labels rolling around in your head, it makes it really hard to want to cuddle on the couch after dinner and watch a movie. But you know, when we first met, I loved that he was always looking after me. I mean, he's the kind of guy that when you go for a walk in the city, he walks between you and the traffic. Like he's some kind of human protection shield because safety is really important to that guy, and he wants to protect those he loves. So I need to remember and appreciate that about my guy. You see, it wasn't his behavior that was annoying, it was my thoughts about it. Because of the label, I now attach to his caring and protective nature, the part that's actually complementary to my <laughs> sometimes reckless, adventurous self. Generally, silently sabotaging the romance in our relationships, this doesn't happen overnight. We don't just wake up one day and decide to ruin the romance in our relationships. No, it's a process. It happens over time, recategorizing the adorables into the annoyables without stopping to consider the consequences. Now, the great news here, there's a way out of this toxic labeling trap. It involves shifting your thinking pattern from negative labels to positive ones. And because us humans are hardwired to label, and we're not going to change, we need to be careful about the words we choose when labeling the ones we love. Now, I think it's worth taking a moment to think about the qualities of your partner that were once charming, adorable even, and why you fell in love with that part of them. In long-term relationships, it's more than just helpful to remember your falling in love story. How did you feel on dates in the early days? You know, in my case, I thought my human shield was pretty sexy, and I still do. So what qualities of your partner did you just adore? What words did you use to describe them? the labels you attach to those qualities that gave you those love feelings. Because after all, there's a fine line between adorable and annoyable, a line that's made up of labels that you get to choose. So 
If you want to keep the romance alive in your relationship, I suggest you become complimentary again. And remember to always label with care. Thank you.